Chronicles of the Immortals, Netherworld Part 2, Van den Plaats. Their collaboration with a German fantasy author has now come to its second part. We talked about the first part, and there's a lot of curiosity out there. There's a lot of people wondering what this second part's going to entail. Is it going to be musically very similar to Part 1? Uh, is this a story that is going to rip-roar its way into a finale, or is it instead going to be a little bit softer? Let me answer a couple of those questions before we even get into this. Let's just get down to brass tacks right away. This could possibly be one of Van den Blas's heaviest albums, or at least the heaviest that they've done in a little while. This has a lot of heaviness to it, and which is interesting considering at the same time the keyboard work and the progression is literally everywhere on this album. It's a very complex disc. It's one that almost borders on on Dream Theater levels of complexity and heaviness at times. It's definitely one that showcases more of the darker edge of Van Den Plaza's sound, almost as though uh, the first album in this series was The Light World, and now we have entered, we have passed through the portal into the Dark World, all depending on which game in the Zelda universe you play. But, what about musically speaking? How does this compare not only with the first disc, but how does it compare with the Legends in Vandom Plaza discography, which if you haven't checked them out before this, this is a good launching point. It's a launching point to an obsession. Now this is an album that starts very simply within my universe, and by very simply I mean it introduces you really, it kind of welcomes you back to where you were. But whenever you get into God Maker's Temple and Stone Rose's Edge, that's whenever the heaviness really starts to come out to play. You can hear the thick guitar work that's being done, as well as the sprawling keys that just dance everywhere on these tracks. And it's something that is even further illuminated whenever you get to Blood of Eden, which, by the way, multi-part song, 13 minutes in length, and maybe, just maybe, it could perhaps be... One of two things. I'm willing to go with one of two things, because saying it's both could be a stretch. Blood of Eden is right on par with what they did with their song Gethsemane, which was a bonus track that they did. It's based off of the Andrew Lloyd Webber song, uh, which was from, I think, Jesus Christ Superstar, which, amazing work. But it may also be the best pure original song that Van Plaus has ever produced. This 13-minute track may actually be them at their apex point. It may be their, their, their top of the mountain, because this song showcases and shows off everything this band's all about. It shows the softer side with the beginning portion of this track, and then it shows their heavy side. And one of the principal highlights is everybody. Everybody seems to get a highlight on this uh, a particular track. We hear the the thick drum whenever we hear the introduction, the transition from softness to heaviness. Andy's voice is just absurdly good on this song. It's absurdly good. He's got such a terrific voice to begin with, but he may have tailored in his best vocal performance ever since Gethsemane on this uh, track right here. It's just it's absurdly good, and I'm jealous of his talents, and I'm not afraid to say that. The keys and the guitar work is trim, uh, it's transformative, it's got a terrific narrative. This may be the best song Van Den Plaas has ever penned. Bar none, plain and simple. And then you go in the monster, which showcases another radical change, another radical side, something you don't hear from Van Den Plaas all that much. We potentially hear a little bit of growling? This is a heavy song. This might be the heaviest song that Van Den Plaas has ever recorded. If we're going for a world full of firsts, we might have had two back-to-back -back right there. And Monster's very good on its own behalf. 7 minutes, 43 seconds of that track. Right there, two songs. Two songs that are right within the heart of this disc that's telling a lot of story. 20 minutes. And it's 20 minutes of music that's not to be missed. It's 20 minutes of music that is sure to be appreciated. Moving on further with this disc, we get a little bit more in the way of elevated diversity. Heaviness is still present, but it's one that also takes a step back, takes a little bit of a tonal shift back, especially whenever you get uh, to the very final track on this album, Circle of the Devil, which actually resembles a little bit more of a power metal song uh, than anything else. It's one that has this very big... And it really supports that high fantasy theme, 
because they collaborated with a fantasy author on this, and he's very well known um, over in Germany. I don't want to butcher his name. See, that's the thing. I don't want to butcher his name, else I would say it. It'll be in the description below. But it supports that high fantasy theory because this feels very much like a triumph at homecoming, either that or a dirge. It really just depends on your kind of classification of the narrative or really what was going for. But Circle of the Devil certainly doesn't make me think of a homecoming unless you're coming back to hell. How are you doing? How you doing, Satan? I'm doing fine. Done any evil shit lately? Oh, you made a bunch of people get pissed off over a coffee cup. Good job, Satan. So... Where does this make a stand with Vanden Plaza, and where does this album stand as far as uh, as far as this year is concerned, or as far as just it's concerned? There's a lot of things that could be said. First of all, as far as Vanden Plaza is concerned, this could be one of their better albums, if not their best. You know, albums such as Christo get a lot of credit, and they're and for the record, they're exceptionally good. You know, anything conceptual this band does tends to have a little bit of a great flavor to it, and even the stuff that's non-conceptual, they just have such a great talented core as far as writing is concerned that it's hard to do any wrong as far as this year is concerned though this has proven to me opened my eyes once again and then caused me to look further that there is a lot of progressive music out there that is just really moving mountains and this is from both bands that are veterans of the genre as well as newcomers but just based off of progressive music alone, 2015 has been an amazing year for music. Any person who is a detractor, any person who is a naysayer is, I'm sorry, you're just wrong. You're just wrong, and I intend to prove that later this week. But in progressive music alone, we've had just countless terrific releases, ones that really seem to set the pace for a new generation to come out, and this is one that is right along those lines. It seems as though, as while, you know, while we're waiting for the Astonishing by Dream Theater, it, it's really hard to say that Vanden Plaza is a palate cleanser or, a, you know, kind of a, a bridger, you know, a bridge between your last favorite prog record and the Astonishing, because it's going to be Astonishing, trust me. Uh, but it's really, it, it, it holds itself up so well on its own that it almost feels insulting to call it that. This is a terrific disc. This is wonderful. Uh, really, this whole cycle, this two-album cycle, has been a terrific experience, not to mention one that needs to be experienced by many music fans. And think about the number of two-part albums we spoke about just a few years ago that were either, you know, just sort of okay or really didn't live up to the expectations. Think about Coheed and Cambria as, you know, the Afterman, the Ascension and the Descension. That was just kind of eh. You know, it, it was better. The first album was really good. second album, not so much. But I figured Death Punch is the wrong side of heaven was just awful. And then, of course, we have to talk about Stone Sour, the whole House of Golden Bones, which was really solid. And there's other bands that have done similar things that have had varied results. We're still waiting on time, part two, goddammit. But whenever it comes to these cycles, this has been a solid one. This is delivered. It's delivered in every way, shape, and form, and I hope that this collaboration actually continues, because I'd like to hear a lot more from this universe. Overall speaking, an 88 out of 100, very, very solid work. One that is for the ages, really, whenever it comes to Bandon Plus. But I want to know what your thoughts are. I want to know what is swimming through your brain about... <clears throat> Chronicles of the Immortals, the, un or the Netherworld Part 2. Let me know in the comments below, and let me know other progressive bands that you're really a big fan of. Because the chances are, later on this week, you're going to have a number more that you're going to enjoy. And yeah, that is a tease. I'm Cover Killer Nation, and I'll talk to you later.